Well, hey there. Welcome back to another episode here on Hall Family Farms. So glad you could join me on this 4th of July weekend. And as you can see, I'm decked out in representing our country with wearing our uh, red, white, and blue. And in fact, uh, some of you know I'm involved with Special Olympics. So this shirt also represents Special Olympics. And this is an Olympic year, so only 20 days left until the Olympics begin. So thought I would wear this to celebrate all of those great and wonderful things. So we've got a lot going on here on the farm. This is my third day of retirement. Second day out in the, the garden. First day was completely a washout. So as you know from the previous video, we moved one of our propagation frames over to a better location. So we've got that set up. Today's project is something I've been wanting to do and try and see what happens. So I'm about to tell you what that is. Um, actually, let me see if I can pan this camera over here or come with me. I'll bring the camera with me and hopefully we won't fall. But before we get to today's topic, uh, don't you just love that flower basket there. Those sweet potato vines, they're really filling out and it really looks good. But what I want to talk about today is something I've been wanting to try and that is to try to see if we could hybridize or cross-pollinate two hibiscus plants. Now this one happens to be a tropical hibiscus plant. It's got a pretty yellow flower. I don't know if I can get you a close-up or not with the camera here on the tripod, but I'll see what I can do. There you go. Actually, there's you get a two-for-one special here. There's two blooms. And so what I want to do is to try to see if we can cross-pollinate this tropical yellow with a the hardy hibiscus plant I have inside my uh, backyard in the pool area and it's a white dinner plate hardy hibiscus and so I'm thinking if I mix the two the white and yellow that perhaps I'll come up with a new hibiscus that maybe is kind of a real light yellow that's kind of what I'm aiming for here so it'll hopefully adopt the genetics from this tropical with the yellow and mix it with the hardy white dinner plate. So anyway, so we're going to pluck one of these flowers. Let me set my camera down so I can get my scissors. All right, we're back. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of these. I think we'll go with this one. Okay, and so you can see with this flower, and I'm still learning a lot about plants, so please forgive me if I get this wrong, but the very middle of this, and I don't know how much you can see, but this, I'm going to back it up just a little bit here. This is called the, the pistil, the center. It's the female part of the plant, and these little tough-like objects are called the anther and they're part of the stamen which is the the little tuft of pollen with the stem that's connected to it so what we're going to try to do is take the pollen from this flower and we're going to put it on the pistil of the white dinner plate so let's take this in and we'll show you that and see if we can have some success. Okay, we're here in my backyard and this is the beautiful white dinner plate hardy hibiscus plant that we want to cross-pollinate this tropical yellow with and hopefully get a kind of a light butter color and hopefully that will be a hardy, it will take the characteristics of the, the mother plant hopefully and be a hardy yellow 
hibiscus. That's the goal. This is tropical. This one's hardy. So again, reviewing the sex anatomy of the flower, the middle portion, and this is right here, this is the pistil of the white dinner plate, or the female organ, if you will. So we're talking plant sex here, <laughs> 101. So this is the female organ, the pistil, and on the top, the receive, receiving part of the pistil is called the stigma. On the male's portion, and that's what we're going to use here, we're going to use the little tufts of yellow pollen, and those little tufts are called the anther, and they are connected down to the pistil, uh, and that whole segment is called the stig stamen. I'm sorry, I think it's called the stamen. Okay, and so on the uh, tropical hibiscus, we're going to take the little yellow tufts, which are the anther, which holds the pollen to this particular hibiscus. And the anther is connected to this, these little uh, stems, branches there. And so that whole section is called the stamen. That's the male organ of the flower. The middle is the pistil, and on top of the pistil are the stigma. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this white dinner plate, and we're going to have these two breed a little bit. We're going to rub some of this yellow pollen on there. Get that coated real good there. Okay, that looks really good. We just turned that it's covered with pollen. So we should get some seeds from this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this up. Hold on one second. Let me pause. I'm going to get a rubber band, and we're going to close this plant up so that no bees or other insects get in there to cross-pollinate. So hold on one second. Okay, so I have a rubber band here, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this flower and kind of close it up. And that way we will prevent any other possibility of another flower cross-pollinating. All right, let me see if I can twist this. Okay. So we're going to leave it like that. And we're going to hope that by crossing the two, we're going to come up with a completely new variety of hardy hibiscus. That's my goal. I don't want it to be a tropical. I want it to be hardy. So I'm hoping it'll, it'll keep the genetics of this mother plant and that it will be a hardy and that it will pick up the uh, yellow color of this tropical hibiscus. All right, we're going to try one more here. Kind of as a backup. So again, in review, this is called the pistil. This whole center section actually is called the pistil, and on top is the stigma, the receiving female organ, or part of the female organ that receives the pollen. And on this tropical, the little tufts that you see all along here are called anthers, and they hold the pollen that we're going to use to paint onto the stigma. So let's see. Now you can see right here, I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of a, a light color. I'm kind of like color deficient, so I'm not sure what color that is, but we're going to put this pollen on there. And you're going to see 
but we're getting it covered. I'm just gonna kind of wipe it on there. And this, my my friends, my gardening friends, this is Plant Sex 101. This is how you get the potential of creating a whole new plant variety through hybridization or cross-pollination. This is how you hybrid this. So there you go. I, we've got it very covered very well with this. So again, I'm going to get a rubber band. We're going to close this one up. And that way we'll, we'll know that these two are cross-pollinated with this tropical yellow. So hold on, I'm going to get another rubber band. Okay, we've got our rubber band. So now we just want to close this up so that no other pollen gets on that pistol or on the stigma. Okay, so let's see if we can double this rubber band. Now we can triple it. I don't want to run the risk of damaging those female Pistons. All right, there we go. All right, so now what we're going to do, I think, is we're going to take one of our white dinner plates and see if we can cross-pollinate it with one of our other flowers. So let's try that. Okay, welcome back. We are going to try to be a hibiscus matchmaker once again. This time, we're going to take this beautiful white dinner plate hardy hibiscus and this time instead of it being the female we're going to treat this as the male flower this time and we're going to breed it with our midnight marvel deep 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 red like burgundy hibiscus so let's go ahead and let's take this flower All right, so we've got our male. Let's go find our female. Okay, we have found our beautiful female, the Midnight Marvel. Isn't it a beauty? And notice that the leaves are a dark color, almost the same color, I think. Again, I'm color deficient as the flower itself. Again, in reviewing our plant sex anatomy again I'm gonna set our dinner plate but won't that be a beautiful combination so again if we're reviewing here so this middle section here this is called the pistol and out here on the end those are the little receivers for the pollen and that's called the stigma the ovary of the plant is down here at the base of the pistil and the male portion of this flower these little tufts of pollen those are anvil and they are the male organ of the flower so this time we're going to treat this flower as the female and we are going to use our white dinner plate as the male and what we're hoping is that we'll pick up a little bit of this white and kind of soften this color, maybe even come up with some sort of uh, bicolor of flower. Um, so let's see what we can do here. Let me fold these back. Look at the pollen just falling off of these guys. I don't know. Hopefully we've got enough. Maybe I'll try to wipe some of that on there. Oh yeah. Okay. That's working. All right. Let's Let's have some plant sex here. Okay. I'm going to fold this flower back. I'm sorry for those that really love flowers. Don't really enjoy this as far as destroying this flower. But sometimes that has to be done to create a whole new variety. So we are 
helping these two to get to know one another. Okay, so I think we've sufficiently covered that. So let me get my rubber band now, and we're going to close this up and trying not to injure that pistol. some problems here Houston all right there we go so hopefully we didn't injure it hopefully it's doing mother nature is helping to do its magic and having that pollen work its way down to the ovary of the flower the rubber band helps so that it prevents pollinators like honeybees from getting in there and bringing in other pollen from maybe other plants and it helps us also to remember this is the one that we cross-pollinated so isn't it beautiful anyway if you've enjoyed this episode please consider giving us a thumbs up if you're not al already a subscriber to hall family farms and you'd like to be please click that subscribe button we'd love to have you be a subscriber to our channel and if you click that notification bell you'll never miss an episode YouTube will send you an email and give you a reminder that or let you know that we have uploaded new content to our channel and we're going to continue to experiment with the different uh, hibiscus and maybe other plants and see what we can do see if we can come up with a new variety so I just love these hibiscus their their blossoms are just huge and